Lagos Assembly passes regulation to boost tax revenue. Plus, a bill for a law to address growing challenges in Lagos transportation sector scales second reading. Deliberations this week kicked off with plans by the state legislature and executive arms to boost the revenue of the state. Now, if the words of the chairman, Lagos Assembly Committee on Finance are anything to go by, then Lagos is set to increase its revenue generation through the installation of cameras at hotels, restaurants and event centers where its tax collection is expected to be properly monitored to avoid tax evasion and tax fraud. This is how we begin the program today. This is Lagos Parliament. I am Abin Bolag Bibi. Get closer to your legislators. See them in action as they deliberate on moving the state forward. Watch updates on weekly events, presentation of bills, passage of laws, adoption of resolutions, and many more. Also, get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week and watch the legislators. Observe plenary in Yoruba language. Lagos Parliament, every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. on TVC News Nigeria. Lagos Parliament. Bringing the legislature closer to you. To be in line with modern trade and no remittance of consumption tax by hotels. The quest to increase the state internally generated revenue led to proposed regulation by these state lawmakers. In this regulation, software and hardware will be installed at hotels, restaurants and event centers for effective monitoring of their sales. According to a report presented to the House by the acting chairman, House Committee on Finance, non-remittance of consumption tax led to this move. It was discovered that some of the hotels in the state evaded payment of their taxes by not remitting as it went due. The installation of the fiscal electronic device in these places is expected to address this. From the pilot scheme that was carried out for about two weeks, it was openly shown that they have really robbed the state to a larger extent. It's a way and it's a drive for compliance and also it's a way to prevent tax evasion in the state. Consumption tax is not new, but it's the way to collect it that is state is introducing. The easiest way to curb um, leakages in collection of taxes is um, automation, which is what has been done with this device. The committee chairman spoke on the need for the regulation, which is to give a legal fit to the move for easy implementation. Some of them have been, have been doing very well, but some have not been very honest because there is no way to monitor it. Because whatever thing they said they have collected is what you have to agree with. Like if you buy a bottle of Coke now, there is a certain percentage that goes on it. So, you know, you know but for them to now remit to the government, uh, it becomes a little bit difficult for them. Some of them have seen it as part of their profit. There is no extra burden going to the hotels in terms of buying software or buying any sort of address. No, the government will provide all. And what we follow is just for them to work according to the rules. It's going to really help the state to increase their IGR. With the regulation passed by the House, Lagos is expected to witness a quantum leap in internally generated revenue in the new fiscal year. Now, in line with the Lagos state government's desire to ensure that Lagos attains a smart city status among other cities of the world, the state lawmakers are putting their best foot forward to achieve this dream. A bill for a law to consolidate all laws relating to the transportation sector in Lagos was read for the second time on the floor of the House recently. The bill, according to the Acting Chairman House Committee on Transport, Honorable Majid, is out to address the growing challenges facing the transportation sector in the state. Right, Honorable Speaker, um, we have for 
second reading, the bill, Lagos State Sector Reforms Bill 2017. With the kind permission of the right honorable speaker, may I move that the bill for a law to consolidate all laws relating to the transport sector, provide for development and management of suitable transport system in Lagos State, and connected purposes be read for the second time as we move. Distinguished honorable members, it is my honor to read for the second time a bill for a law to consolidate all laws relating to the transport sector, provide for the development and management of a sustainable transport system in Lagos State and for connected purpose. The of the bill is to overhaul and have harmonized bill on the transportation also to have effective and efficient transportation policies in the state. Because one of the things that can make a state or nation to be reckoned with globally is to have effective transportation policies in place. The bill also first in the Ministry of Transportation overall management and supervision of all agencies in the sector and to promote synergies and corporations among them. However, Section 24, Section 65, Section 85, Section 120, and Section 144, Section 177, and Section 197 talks about establishment and compositions of the board. I am of opinion that the chief executive of each board needs to appear before the House for the confirmations of the appointment. Section 35 talks about the controls of motorcycle and tricycle within the state. I want to submit that this session need to be looked into because some of us from the rural areas where most of our roads are not motorable, the only means of the transportation is the motorcycle. Furthermore, section 63 to section 82 are on Lagos State Parking Authority. If passed into the law, it's going to create employment opportunity for the youth within the state. And the issues of illegal parking in the state will be totally eliminated. And secondly, is going to reduce the congestions on our road because most of the taxi drivers and the cab, they park by the roadside and pick their passengers. And I believe that if this thing passes into the law, the issue of the traffic on our road, on our road is going to be reduced. Finally, sir, the harmonization and overhauling of this transport-based law is also crucial for economic development, safe and conducive transport systems in the state. I want to enjoy all my members to contribute possibly to this bill. Thank you, sir. And section 22, under the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, that vehicles are not defined. We don't know what exactly is a vehicle under the definition section. So vehicles should be defined to include anything that is propelled by wheels. Uh, I further observed in section 37.4 where there is an obvious typographical error. So I, I, I want the committee to look into that 37.4. Uh, the error will be detected there. The statement is incomplete and it doesn't uh, make a comprehension easy there. Uh, this bill is, is good. Mr. Speaker, if it's passed to the law, definitely it will reduce insecurity in the state in the manner that unmarked vehicles and unregistered vehicles is prohibited from this very bill. This will reduce unidentification of people or the owner of the vehicle. It's highly very important for this. Mr. Speaker, because I want to stretch one very important aspect of the bill. That's the FECU inspector, inspectorate section, which I feel, Mr. Speaker, and feel strongly to. That, that sector is supposed to be an agency, supposed to be given an autonomy instead of department. It's very important when you see their surface. Even the, 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 the fear of FIO is the beginning of wisdom. 
All we are trying to do, or rather all they are trying to do is to ask us to merge everything together. So we should not start treating it as if it's something that has just come. This bill is to, um, should I say, just bring together the existing bills, dot the I's, cross the T's. Lagos is a smart city with ease of doing business. If you want to look for transport laws, you should find them in one place, not Elta Skelter, so which is very nice. We can take advantage of this, um, this bill now because there was a time we had um, a motion on electronic traffic management, which is what Mr. Speaker is talking about, this has been VIO. I don't see why they need to stop vehicles before they know the vehicle is registered or not. They can have the right equipment, and as vehicles are approaching, they know whether it's registered or not. They know that whether, whether the MOT is in place or not. So that should also be something we should incorporate in this bill. I notice also that the, they've tried to reduce the, the board size, which is fine, saves us money. And um, there's one critical thing I observe. The use of word MD, CEO, and GM, it's used very fluxly, so loosely. So we should see a way to ensure that which is going to be CEO for a certain um, is it department or agency, as the case may be, we should be able to follow that. I'm particularly intrigued by this um, Lagos um, Parking, um, Lagos State Parking Authority. Uh, smarting from Schedule 4 of the Constitution, which provides that um, parking should be responsibility of um, local government and um, let me say from Lagos Island that I come from, we generate a lot of money from parking, more than 40, 50 million naira per year and that is what we used to do, my complete student in Lagos and local government by providing uniforms, sandals, socks, everything for all the pupils in Lagos and local government. Taking, by reading provision of these sections, of um, the functions of the Lagos State Parking Authority, I now feel that um, the function had been taken away from the local government, it will, um, as it were, make them cripple the local government, make them non-functional. And we are talking of the evolution of power. We are saying power should be devolved. This section is talking about concentration of power in the state, and um, it should be looked into and um, a way of resolving it by the, by the committee. Aside from that, section 14 and section 17 and I think our legal system will always say that um, a person is um, innocent until a proven guilty in court, but in section 14 and 17, you are assumed to be guilty. You are the one that is asked to now prove your innocence. It is the other way around. I also want us to 14 and 17. Look at it critically with a few to solving, um, with a few to solving it. And um, aside from that, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, just real quickly, I would um, just want to point out that, like you rightly said, when you mentioned the um, Lagos State Ferry Service, I would suggest that we really look into um, the composition of the Lagos State Bus Service Limited and that of the Lagos State Ferry Service Limited, so as to protect the interest of the state. And then we try to avoid what um, reoccurred in the last um, when they are all limited and then they claim they are not answerable to us. So I would ask that the committee quickly, I mean, um, really look into um, the composition of those services. Thank you. While adopting the submission of my colleagues that have spoken previously on this bill, I also want to say that it's a bill that will have positive impact, positive impact on the society. But Mr. Speaker and colleagues, I think there's a contradiction in section 11 and section 35 of the bill, while section 35 is saying that it bans all um, bans riding and driving of propelled carts, wheelbarrow, and um, <clears throat> within the road, section <clears throat> 11 is talking about riders' permit for Okada riders and goes ahead under its penal section to provide for, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Speaker to provide for um, penalties for riding Okada. That means in one hand, the bill is trying to outlaw um, riding of bicycle and tricycle, and on the other hand, it's providing for penalties for those who ride it, not having right permits to ride it. So I think we have to look at that. Also, Mr. Speaker, I want us to also look at the penal section of the bill. And some of the fees, um, some of the penalties 
specified in the bill, lower in some extents and higher in some extents. Regulating it will put the bill in proper perspective when passed to law. And the whole, Mr. Speaker, I think it has a positive impact. It will have positive impact on the society when passed to law. Thank you. Tying all these agencies to the Office of Governor is something that we, know we need to look at. We, I'm sure the chairman and the will be members of that committee that work on this bill will look at that. They talk about loan, seeking for loan. They still have to get approval from the governor, appointment from the governor, and so many other things. I think this is not going to help us. If we are trying to be effective and efficient, then degree of independence must be given to those who are going to serve in these uh, agencies, and most especially the composition of the board must, as I've earlier mentioned, should be taken away from the system. You have people from Ministry of Transportation, local government, physical planning, and all this. It's still the same system. We should bring people from outside with genuine idea, genuine intention, who are really willing to serve so they can bring modern ideas. And for me, anybody, I think the chairman has mentioned that if the uh, I mean, composition of the board or whatever appointment of managing director or director general, whatever it is, should at least be thrown open. You should seek for those who are competent enough and that must come before the people's parliament to let us, uh, you know, uh, confirm if truly they are capable or otherwise. So I want to urge the chairman to make sure they address these issues in this. Uh, uh, in this, uh, we we'll call it new bill, to address it and look at them critically and some section as well when it comes. Even the government on its own cannot borrow money without the approval of the house. So encouraging an agency to seek for loan. And most times, even like in case of La Mata, where they can um, engage in some financial activities without approval, it's not something that we just have to encourage for us to ensure and transparency and uh, accountability. So, Mr. Chairman, I hope when you are doing this, maybe what you should do is to go through this bill side by side with the old provision. When we have that, you can now dictate what is new and what they have just introduced in this uh, bill. Since we uh, have the acting chairman, as Honorable Fatai Moji, uh, we Alex Honorable Desmond, Honorable Laiwala, Honorable Makinde, Honorable Oshun, and uh, Honorable Mosumala and Fama Kiwa to join him. We will give you one month to get back to us on this bill. Thank you. Away from that story, more than a thousand artisans, traders, and physically challenged persons in the queer area of Lagos were recently empowered with various tools of trade as well as poverty alleviation items. At the program put together by a member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Olushegun Oluladi, wife of the Lagos State Governor, Mrs. Bolanle Ambode, urged beneficiaries not to sell the items but use them for their good. Get closer to your legislators. See them in action as they deliberate on moving the state forward. Watch updates on weekly events, presentation of bills, passage of laws, adoption of resolutions, and many more. Also, get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week and watch the legislators. Observe plenary in Yoruba language. Lagos Parliament, every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. on TVC News Nigeria. Lagos Parliament, bringing the legislature closer to you. The program tagged Mega Empowerment attracted traders, artisans and the less privileged in the rural areas of a queer community. Various items such as sewing and grinding machines, hair dryers, fishing nets, carpentry tools among others were put together by the representative in the state parliament to alleviate their sufferings. As a lawmaker, we hold no executive position. I can but go out of my way to ensure some level of provision for my people. We do hope that this our widow's mind will turn some corners and bring a few relief for families and their dependents. We have considered in this year empowerment program 
the need to support those physically challenged in our midst. Now, but what about the love we took from her? Any other girl, I'm not going to talk. I don't love any other couple that lost their way. Any other girl, I'm not going to find any girl. Wife of the governor of Lagos State, Mrs. Bolanli Ambodi, presented the items to the beneficiaries with a note of caution to them not to sell them, but use them for the purpose intended. It's a program that is now expected with eagerness by the youths and the people in view of the systematic impact it is making. It will also make you become an employer of labor in time to come. This is, this is the sort of future that Eleni is planning for you all. My dear brothers and sisters, all that you need to do is to recognize your own potential or area of interest and commit your energy with all seriousness. There are many specialties available. Locate your choice and settle down to an enterprise that will soon guarantee a stable income for you and make you self-dependent. In his remarks, the council boss and the host community says the initiative is in response to the yearnings of the people. An initiative that set out every time to intervene in the plight of our people, halt their sufferings, give them a direction, set them on a meaningful career path, make them self-sufficient and able to add value to the society, and ultimately empower them to take their destinies in their hands. For other members of the legislature, where at the events, the roles of a legislator, they say, lies between active representation on the floor of the house and feeling the pains of the constituents. When you represent your people by giving a means of livelihood, that is the essence of we being their representative. Lawmaking is just an integral part of our function, but the most potent, important of all the three functions is representation and what he's doing today is representation by excellence i appreciate him representing your people you have to represent their yearnings their aspirations their wishes and of course you have to show that you care so this may not be part of law making but it is part of representation and you have to represent your people you have to see where the shoe pinches and how you can ameliorate the pains of the people. So I see Oluwadi has been very practical in his, um, in his, in his determining what his people need and they're trying to uh, give succor to the hardship they might have been um, confronting in their areas of um, um, vocation. And that's why we have all this. It's very impressive and I commend him for that. I feel happy and I congratulate him sincerely for this land fit and you can see it is monumental is just to make sure that they impacted positively on the life of our people this is not his first time he's done it severally before i have equally done it severally before and that is what we call healthy competition and healthy rivalry just to make sure that we continuously give it, giving back to our people and what he has done today is to signpost it that he meant well for his people, he appreciates them so much for footing him and he wants to you know, reciprocate the good gesture. It's a welcome development and it's a nice one. What we always employ them is to make use of it. Let's, let, it's a value chain reaction. Let other people feel the impact. If you, if you are empowered, empowered others to, no matter how little, try and do something. For me, that is actually what we should learn to do. If something is done to you freely, know that it's expected for you at a point in life to give back freely to others too.
Many of the beneficiaries could not hold back their joy as they described how the initiative would help in improving their standard of living. I want to pray for Elenio. That God bless him. Hello. And he's going to continue to move forward and everything is going to do. The lawmaker vowed to continue to reach out to the people based on their peculiar needs. Abimbola Agbibi, TVZ News, Lagos. Get closer to your legislators. See them in action as they deliberate on moving the state forward. Watch updates on weekly events, presentation of bills, passage of laws, adoption of resolutions, and many more. Also, get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week and watch the legislators. Observe plenary in Yoruba language. Lagos Parliament, every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. on TVC News Nigeria. Lagos Parliament. Bringing the legislature closer to you. And with that, we've come to the end of the program this week. We thank you for watching. To catch up with previous episodes of Lagos Parliament, log on to www.youtube.com forward slash TVC Nigeria. I am Abin Bolag, baby. See you next week.